So, after the genomes are assembled together, uh, doing annotation is an interesting and very important task. So, what we do here is we try to do, we try to locate some important genes, uh, which are the protein coding genes and their uh, protein products. We try to locate the RNA encoding genes. Uh, we recognize the uh, non-coding regions in the genome. Uh, we can also predict the functions of the genes, uh, biochemistry and structure of their products. Uh, we can explore some literature links. Uh, we can also explore the links to the genetic maps where they are located on the chromosomes. Uh, we can look into the location of the repeats, uh, location of sequence tag sites, and sequence polymorphisms. Uh, annotation is an important step, uh, which is actually uh, most of the time what we do here is we do comparison. So, we uh, find the significant alignments uh, with some proteins of the known functions. And annotations are divided into two types. One is structural annotations and then the other one is the functional annotations. So, structural annotations are uh, where we actually try to identify certain features which are related to the genes, for example, promoters, terminators, uh, Scheindel garnocytes, uh, which are the ribosomal binding sites during the protein synthesis. Um, there are some specific uh, patterns uh, of the nucleotides within the genes, we call them as motifs. Uh, we look for core transcriptional units, uh, operons in microbes, so in microorganisms, uh, a lot of the uh, genes, they are transcribed together, so we call them as uh, operons. Uh, there are two tools which are important or worth mentioning here. One is Magpie and the other one is GeneQuiz. So, they are designed to assist with genome annotations. Magpie stands for Multipurpose Automated Genome Project Investigation Environment. Uh, normally, it is used for structural annotations, whereas GeneQuiz is good for functional annotations. So, here we have a outline that uh, is kind of a workflow how Magpie works. So, we take some source sequence and we give it to uh, some uh, software program, we call it as Magpie daemon. So, it takes that sequences which are added to the, to the, uh, to the databases. So, it automatically gets them and then it sends that data to some local tools and some remote tools over the internet and then it explores some specific features or annotation patterns and then it puts them into its uh, feature database. And then, and then later on, those results are interpreted and we get the reports. So, in this way, it's kind of an automated uh, annotation gathering tool. Attaching biological information to the genes is called functional annotations. So, what we do here is we attach biological functions, uh, we talk about biochemical functions, we go for gene expression. Normally, we go for a transcription of the genes as uh, we take it as a gene expression measure and then regulation and interaction among different genes. Uh, there are different classification schemes uh, which are there for this uh, functional classification. So, one of them was actually this eight group classification. So, that is to classify the genes and their products into one of these groups which were like enzymes. Uh, transporters, regulators, membranes, structural elements, protein factors, uh, leader peptides. Uh, these are the, uh, the, the leader peptides actually control transcription and translation. Uh, and then we have carriers, transporters. So, in this way, uh, scientists, they have seen that 90% uh, of the E. coli genes, they fit into uh, these, these categories. So, their annotations can be explained. Uh, there is another scheme that is enzyme commission numbers or EC numbers. So, that was put forward by uh, enzyme commission and that was working under the IUBMB, International Union for Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. So, they say that enzymes, uh, they are classified on the basis of the reactions they catalyze and we have a four digit um, scheme which is actually the enzyme commission number. So, in which we have first digit, uh, we represent here as A. So, it's actually, uh, we, we, this number tells us that uh, this enzyme belong, belongs to 
uh, one of the six class of biochemical reactions. So actually, they have six classes, so an or enzyme can be coming from one of them. Uh, whereas the B is the group of substrate, the thing on which it acts. C tells us about the acceptor molecule, and D is the detail of uh, that biochemical reaction. So, for instance, uh, we have an example here, EC 3.4.11.4. So, where in uh, the first digit here, 3, uh, that means it's hydrolase. So, hydrolase is actually the, the enzyme that uses water to break up something. And 3.4 means it's an hydrolase that acts on peptide bonds. So, it's kind of breaking some proteins. 3.4.11 means uh, actually it's an hydrolase that cleaves the amino terminal amino acids on a polypeptide. And the last digit 4, put, putting everything together. So, these are actually the hydrolases that cleave uh, amino terminal amino acid of a tripeptide. So, uh, with this enzyme commission scheme, uh, they classified 70% of the E. coli uh, in genes into um, the 70% of the E. coli genes they shared first two classes A and B. So, they are kind of catalyzing the same biochemical reactions. Uh, there is another scheme that we call it as a three group scheme. So, divide all those functions into energy related or information related or communication related. So, it was found that plants, they devote half of their genome to the energy uh, and me metabolism of the energy. Obviously, they make food for all of us, whereas animals, they talk a lot. So, uh, they, they spend a lot of their energy in communication. So, in the end, we conclude that uh, finding genes and their coding regions uh, is uh, an important task in genome annotations. Uh, functional annotations, they correlate genes into different uh, classes of functions.